Hello, thank you for being here. I'm Ida Farman, a research associate at the Shore Center for Economic Policy Analysis. We learned today that the unemployment rate has fallen slightly, but it's still very high at 11.1% nationally. To break it down further, it is 9.7 for older workers, 15.4% for black workers, and 10.1% for white workers in comparison. We're here today with SIPA alumni Kyle Moore, who is currently working on the Joint Economic Committee on Capitol Hill. Hello, Kyle. It's great to have you back. Hey, Ida. Yeah, it's great to be back here with SIPA. So let's get into the numbers. So based on past trends, is this worse or better than expected? Do we expect the disparities to get worse as the recovery unfolds? Uh, sure. So when folks are looking at disparities in the black-white unemployment rate, people typically expect to see this two-to-one difference uh, where the, you know, the black unemployment rate is about twice that of the white unemployment rate. It's been that way for basically the past 50 years. This recession has been different in the sense that uh, that gap has been, has been a lot smaller than usual. Um, that's due to the nature of this recession uh, being different. As this recession, you know, starts to progress and become a true economic recession, we do expect that gap to, uh, to increase, uh, that ratio to start approaching two to one, uh, even more so. Uh, and that's going to be largely due to the fact that the black unemployment rate is going to fall a lot slower uh, or stagnate as compared to the white unemployment rate. That's what we've seen so far. Uh, and now, in, in dealing with the unemployment rate, generally speaking, I think the, the most important thing we can do, and this is what the economist has told us at the committee uh, over and over again, is that we need to contain this public health crisis. We need to stop the virus first and foremost. Then we can start talking about how we get to an economic recovery that's going to start closing these disparities and it's going to start, you know, start us on the path towards a good recovery. Sure, sure. So the Joint Economic Committee recently released a report on the impacts of coronavirus on the working poor and people of color. Can you highlight some of the important findings from that research? Uh, sure. So again, we looked into who is going to be disproportionately impacted by the health aspect of, of, of COVID-19 and also the economic aspects of the, of the, you know, the recession that would come from it. And what we found were that, you know, uh, the working poor uh, black workers and Latinx workers were indeed most likely to be uh, disproportionately affected by this virus, uh, both in terms of contracting the virus, uh, having serious complications from it, mortality from the virus, uh, and also, you know, losing access to their job or, 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 or other economic, uh, you know, aspects of, of the virus. Uh, so we looked into who had access to paid leave, who had access to the, you know, the ability to work from home. And we found that Black and Latinx workers were indeed disproportionately in those occupations that would lead, uh, that did not have access to those benefits. Um, and so, you know, the thing that tied together was to say that, you know, economic inequality is at the root of, uh, you know, who gets disproportionately affected. And that um, those disparities are indeed the result of policy uh, and the result of, of who has access to the privileges that protect them in the event of, you know, a crisis like this. Oh, that's a very important point. So what are some of the systematic failures that are causing this disparity? Uh, sure. So, you know, these, that comes down to things like, um, you know, who is exposed to discrimination in the labor market. Um, it comes down to things like the, the persistent wealth gap between Black and white Americans which might lead them, you know, certain folks to be able to stay out of the labor market if they need to, right? Uh, to protect them, you know, to draw down on wealth so they don't, aren't exposed to the virus in the same ways. Um, you know, who lives in places where public transportation is your only method of getting to work, right? So there are a lot of these systemic reasons why we see, uh, you know, Black and Latinx workers more so affected by this virus and more so exposed to the economic consequences of the recession that we're in right now. Uh, and again, I think it's just really important to reiterate that these are systemic problems, right? And they're gonna take systemic policy to solve. This isn't down to individuals making different choices. This is individual behavior. This is a structural systemic set of issues uh, that it takes that framework to solve. Thanks, that was very informative and thank you for being here today. Sure, it's great to be here.
right and thanks everyone for watching